Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. It was common for adventurers to reach deep into dungeons, or at least deeper than initially expected. This form of spelunking had led to the creation of the warrior caste. A group of adventurers who went in solo into the most dangerous of dungeons to challenge themselves, how deep can I get without help? They had special rings that gave them a unique sound that activated upon the adventurer's death. It was attuned to a frequency that the corpse gatherer guilds were using to identify their bodies' locations. Members of the warrior caste often had to be saved out of monster bodies or have their skeletons be brought to an arclitch to cast true revivification on them. Which was only semi-legal. The casting of the spell was legal, sure, but teaching it as well as being a lich in the first place, that was highly illegal. But the warrior caste had their connections, and they weren't specifically the good guys. They had unique identifiers, such as their white-black straw hats inspired by the swordsmen of the Eastern Enclaves, and a black scarf that they used to cover their faces. Usually they were avoided by the adventurers as they refused help. They really just wanted to slay monsters and revel in the triumph of it. Having found something big and strong, usually crying multiple people to take down, was a great achievement to them. One big problem, however, almost every member of the warrior caste walked straight into was hunger. Since they went in alone, they had very limited resources. But to them, this was part of the fun. The starvation, the thrill of the fight, the glory of bringing home a trophy and materials that could be used for their gruesome weapons, that was what they lived for. The warrior caste was proud of the use of flesh mending to fuse monster parts with more common weaponry. These vile fusions of metal and monster biology were called amalgams. In fact, some amalgams were seemingly still alive. One of the weapons, one of the amalgams, wielded by some warrior caste members, required the lungs and flesh of a quill beast from the southern continents. It was a living, breathing apparatus that fired the beast's quills and was even capable of self-replicating them if the weapon was fed through a mouth opening on its underside. The warrior cast forever just referred to it as a quill beast crossbow. But most prized among the warrior cast was Dragonbone. Due to the nature of dragons' insides, their bones made incredibly powerful, yet still light equipment. Well, at least in comparison to metals of equal strength. And a dragonbone armored warrior was considered a high-ranking member by default. And what every warrior cast member strived for. And what you strived for. A rookie. Way over your head. You were a dwarf, one of the few human races allowed into the caste. Magic, outside of mending the monstrous weaponry, was highly frowned upon. Even the liches the caste utilized to revive long-gone members were tall men in life. Elves, halffoots, kobolds and gnomes were usually not allowed into the fold. While tall men, dwarves and sometimes even a few orcs and ogres usually donned a straw hat and scarf. 
You were quite muscular, at least compared to your tall men brethren. Other dwarfs would refer to you as lean and agile, though that was actually preferred for your job. It allowed you to better slip between monster attacks. It was satisfying to dodge a wide swipe by just a hair's length. Though you had never gotten this deep before, and honestly, you weren't planning to. This dungeon was ginormous. And your resources were gone. And while the hunger could be slept away, it was the thirst that was bothering you. The walls were well known for quickly burning for energy, requiring them to eat and drink more than the average human. To save as much of your strength as possible, you were using your sheathed sword as a crutch, slumping your way through the darkness. The haunts were twisting and old, burned out torches lining the walls, and the air was quite stale down here. On your back, you were carrying the remains of a shatter shield, a relatively rare lizard monster. They were medium sized, around that of a cockatrice. Its scales were easily pierced by spears, and they fed on large bugs, primarily moths, so they didn't have any teeth either. They weren't good for armor making, but shatter shields had quite sturdy, bulbous, hammer like tails. A warhammer using the shatter shield's tail would certainly be a respectable addition to your arsenal. But carrying the heavy corpse significantly slowed you down. You were grunting with every step, but you were determined. Teeth clenched, and hair hanging down your face, wet from sweat. You pushed your body to its absolute limit, and you were determined to do so. Luckily, your unconscious body was discovered by an adventurer. You didn't know how long you had passed out from overexhaustion, but awakening with a cool cloth on your forehead, with the smell of something absolutely delicious bubbling next to you from a heat source, was making you feel at peace. Well, I saved you was alone, as they were cutting something on a wooden board just by the sound of it. You still felt weak, however, at least your tongue felt wet again. Yet Xavier probably force-fed you some water while we were knocked out. Slowly you breathed, trying to figure out your situation without looking. The unmistakable noise of a knife scratching over wood was followed by something hitting the bubbling water surface. Sounds like a stew. A hardy one, judging by the smell. Of cooked meat. And herbs. Your mouth was watering, and slowly you dared to open one eye slightly. Turning your head, you checked your surroundings. You were in a room, that much was clear. It was round, with three exit hallways. The corpse of the giant lizard you felt was lying in one end, though to your horror, large chunks seemed to have been removed from it. Immediately you jolted up, the vertigo causing you to fall back immediately. Hey, hey! Heard a singular male voice. You're still weak. You gotta eat first, before you can even think of standing up. Got it? You grunted and rubbed your forehead. Especially someone as skinny as you. S skinny? Skinny? You were about to protest, but you didn't have the strength to do that. You know, it's irresponsible to go this deep alone. He was one to talk. He was alone too. Slowly you roughed yourself up, sitting, swiping over your mouth. You had drooled in your unconscious state. Your eyes then fell upon the man who was talking. A dwarf, like you, handsome one at that. He had a stocky built, a beautiful beard, a little unkempt, perhaps, and he wore a horned helmet with a few dents and scratches on it. He was the one cooking. I suppose those dwarves are drawn to the underground, eh? <laughs> he joked. You took it as an attempt to lighten the mood. Scratching the back of your head, you mumbled, y Yeah, I suppose. 
You had been lying on a thin leather sleeping bag, still wearing your thick leather padded tunic. It was originally made with tall men in mind, but on you it was more like a leather dress that reached just past your knees. Your hat was placed on your chest, and your scarf rolled up next to your pillow. I took the opportunity and cooked up some thing for us to eat. Um, and I cut some of that shatter shield. The flesh goes well in a tomato stew. Your eyes widened with shock. Wait, they're edible? Wasn't that why you were carrying that thing? Embarrassed, you blushed and sighed. I wanted to bring it to the surface to our local weapon mender. Weapon mender? Said the dwarf with surprising energy. <laughs> You're one of them slayer types, huh? Mm. Metric. You crossed your arms and scoffed. <laughs> so what if I am? Your kind slaughters monster of zero abandon. For it does to the dungeon ecosystem. Or for what? A better sword? You shrugged. Uh, so what if I am? The dwarf sighed deeply. He wasn't regretting saving you, but he also didn't like how dismissive you were. Though, he knew that there was no point in explaining it to you. After all... Your species was known for its stubbornness. At least do me the favor and think twice before attacking a hapless creature. I mean, we don't bother with small fries. After a few moments of silence, where you just watched the dwarf add herbs and spices to the red bubbling stew, he spoke up again. Earlier you wondered if the lizard is edible, yes? We learn how to prepare smaller monsters during training sessions, yes, you said. Just in case, of course. Uh, they have a list of edible parts, though shatter shields aren't on it. Their meat is too hard and stringy. The dwarf chuckled as he brushed with a hand through his beard. Ah, yes, but when cooking it slowly over low heat, it becomes tender, especially fatty pieces. Practically starts melting like butter in your mouth. His description alone made you shuffle closer towards him and the stew. So I diced the shatter shield meat, cut from your prey, and added some fresh vegetables from my personal garden. Nothing special, just some onions, tomato paste, and paprika slices. Add on that oil, butter, and water with a handful of dungeon-sourced herbs and spices. Boil it on low heat. You just want very few bubbles throughout the entire cooking process. Make sure to stir it so it doesn't start sticking to the bottom of the pot. He grabbed the ladle from the pot and pulled it out. Some of the half-finished meal. Here, test it. You gulped. You weren't opposed to eating it. Taking a close whiff of the food, your stomach gurgled and your leg muscles contracted. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know how long it would take for you to awaken, so I just chose to make this. It's, it's, it's fine, you grunted. After calming yourself down, you finally blew over the ladle and then took a sip. You swallowed it with closed eyes. Wow, it was smooth and savory. The herbs gave it some spice, a very pleasant aftertaste. Drool rolled past your lips. It's amazing. Please, the dwarf laughed. <laughs> of course it is. I'm a connoisseur of dungeon food. <laughs> Monster meal was done cooking. Your road to recovery truly began. Greedily you devoured your food. The name is Sentry, by the way. I, in all this excitement, I forgot to introduce myself. You put your ball down. You have been shoveling for a bit and were now out of breath. Lita. My name is Lita. Hmm, I see. The name means glory, doesn't it? Featuring for a warrior such as yourself, hmm? You blushed. Again. 
I, 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 I guess. You stuttered. So you're planning to mend that thing over there, he mumbled. What exactly were you trying then? You scratch over your shoulder with embarrassment. I want to make a warhammer with its tail. I suppose that makes sense. Don't worry, I would not have discarded the. Don't worry, I would have discarded the tail as it isn't edible, so it isn't damaged. You can still probably make a weapon out of it. Thank you. You lean towards the food, filling up your bowl again. Don't eat too much. On a starving stomach, you sure need too much. I, I wasn't starving. But you are. I'm not lanky either. Sanji raised both hands defensively. I was dehydrated. Okay, I, I ran out of water two days ago, and I ate my ra ration yesterday. I still have enough meat on my bones. Got it? The trek home was at least another four days. Carrying the remains of the lizard, you can safely add another fifth day to it. You grunted, lowering your head. You quickly learned, as a warrior cast member, that returning from the dungeon was much, much more trouble than getting down. It's good you aren't squeamish when it comes to dungeon food, though. <laughs> so, does this mean you will accompany me? To the surface? He asked curiously. Sentry then leaned back and thought. Yes, I was going into the upper levels anyway. And sure, some little company will keep us entertained, won't it? That is, if you aren't too prideful for that. Sanchi, despite him egging you on to eat more, was good company. Meaning, he was quiet. And less the talk about food came on. He was quite passionate about it. Though he meant secretive about his past. You simply returned it in kind by not telling him things about your own, such as how many times you had died, or which rank in the cast you actually were, not that admitting to him that you were still a rookie without any mended weapons would cause him to scoff at you. It was just principle. On the evening of the fourth day, when the familiar forest scenery had returned, you had set up camp in one of the hollowed-out trees. Over the last couple of days, you had hunted minor game whenever possible, or ate more meat from the lizard. Though by now it had become too old, it would probably give you or Senshi the runs. So you had hung it up in a tree opposite to your camp with a thick rope. You honestly felt calmer now that the end was quickly approaching. Senshi was currently hammering a few meat slivers from a rather disgusting creature you had hunted yesterday into the right form. The monster was called a boil pig. They were common and difficult to hunt due to the titular boils. They were filled with strong acid intended to quite literally melt the jaws off of whatever creature tried to eat the pig, normally ignored by adventurers. To kill it you used one of the dungeon's spike traps and after carefully cutting around the boils, not a lot of actual edible meat was left. Sanchi was right now rolling the meat slivers around a few edible vegetables that grew from the various plants of the level and fried them with the rest of his oil. Once done, it didn't actually taste all that good. The boiled pig meat, despite not acidic tasting, the boiled pig meat, despite not dangerous to eat, tasted sour almost pickled, while well, definitely edible, screwed with your taste buds enough to make your brain think it was rotten. And the sweet taste from the vegetables made it just edible enough to not vomit. I think I'll toss the rest of the pig meat when we reach the surface, he mumbled, never cooking this again. You chuckled. <laughs> yeah, me too. Over time, you had come to like the dwarf. The amount of time you smiled and laughed, having drastically increased. 
especially whenever he took his helmet off. He had quite mature facial features, and it was difficult not to seductively purr when Abby just glanced at you. So far, neither of you tried anything, of course, but considering once you reached the upper floors you'd go to your weapon mender with the Shatter Shield, there was a high chance you'd never see each other again. Not to mention, warrior cast adventurers were supposed to go in alone. There was no pride in cooperation. You only made an exception as you already felt the Shatter Shield on your own. Though you did take note of what monsters were edible on your journey with him. And you definitely intended on sharing it with the warrior cast instructors. And so, finally, you huddled a little closer to Senshi. While he was frying another serving of the meat-wrapped vegetables. He looked at you and smiled, causing your heart to skip a beat. You know, Senshi, you said quietly, this might be the last night we spent together. He tilted his head curiously. Oh, well, I haven't thought about that yet. A part of you was offended that he didn't catch your hint. <sighs> but it was obvious why. He was a hermit. I, I guess this might come off as a little sudden to you, but... Do you think I'm attractive? Truth be told, if this worked, it was going to be your first time, and considering his solitude, most likely his too. He shook and blinked. Well, Lita, I would say you are. For how thin you are, I mean. You managed to suppress a grimace. Your entire life you have been described as big and strong. It were always just the dwarven men who called you skinny. And you hated that. Right. Why do you ask? I, I, I guess I just... You rubbed over your own shoulder to soothe your nerves. I thought you'd think I'm ugly. What made you think that? If if I made you feel ugly, I apologize. That was never my intention. He looked into your eyes with sincerity, causing you to blush. Your heart was racing. Senshi smiled. I just worry that you don't eat enough. But I'm glad that you have a hearty appetite. That's good to know. And with the knowledge I've given you, well... Let's just say you won't have to starve anymore, huh? Thank you. I I really appreciate that. Finally, you placed your hand on his, which caused him to shook and blush. And I mean, really appreciate it. You purred. Later, he muttered. Senshi gulped. Your face came closer to his, but just when you thought he would go for the kiss, he leaned forward, leaving you in the dust. With disappointment, you looked at him. He was taking the food off the frying pan and wrapped it in some paper. It's for later, he said hastily. Sure. After that failed attempt at romance, it took you some time to bring up the courage again. It was a couple of hours later. Sanchi was still awake, poking the flames to stay warm, while you had pretended to sleep. And eventually, you had crawled next to him. I thought you were sleeping. I, I can't sleep, I feel actually quite full of energy. As if to call your bluff, Senshi looked outside to where the stinky Shatter Shield carcass was hanging. You had carried it all day, after all. You had carried it all day, after all. Honestly, Senshi was glad you washed yourself every night with some soap and hot water before sleeping. Which, thanks to his pot, was made much more easier and quicker. Senshi? You sat after a moment of silence. He looked at you, only to instantly be met by your lips. You kissed him. And for a moment nothing happened. As he was too shook by you. But then, he let go of the stick. 
and began brushing through a hair with his right hand in a soothing manner. It was pleasant and sinful. You were too shy to actually push your tongue past your lips, but still, feeling his fluffy beard brush over your face, smelling his wonderful musk, it made your knees feel weak. For a moment you separated, to take a breath. Lida, he whispered. And without him really being in control of his own body anymore, he placed a hand on your chest squeezing curiously and you smiled grabbing his arm by the wrist maneuvering his fingers beneath your tunic your skin touched his rough fingers gliding over your soft skin I don't think we can go back after this I I You smiled. It's okay. We can keep going. In fact, I want you to. You whispered in response. <laughs>